So we left Minnehaha Falls, I don't know, about 10 minutes ago, and we decided to go on up to Clayton, Georgia, which is a cool little town. And uh, right now we're on Bridge Creek Road. This is uh, like the back way kind of to get there. I guess they're all- mile, turn left onto Charlie Mountain Road. That's our Apple Maps talking. Um, but anyways, uh, this is a, a, a nice little road. If you have a motorcycle or, or you're just in a, you know, take your time. It's a, it's a nice country, mountain, scenic road. And if you really just take your time, you'll see a lot of neat stuff. You'll see some really old cabins that, you know, predate the Civil War. There's, there was a lot of battles and skirmishes up here during the Civil War. Georgia has a rich history, as I'm sure a lot of people know and understand. But like I said, you just have to watch out for bears and, and deer. You've got all kinds of wildlife up here. They've even been known to have uh, mountain lions up here. And every once in a while, you'll have the big old giant wildlife, which is called a cow, standing in the middle of the road <laughs> that, got, that got out of the, the farmer's uh, pens. Just take your time when you drive up here and you'll see a lot of cool stuff. Now for you hikers and fishermen, I don't know what to tell you, but this is like the paradise for trout fishing. Hiking is just, like I said earlier on the other video that we did, there's so many hikes up here. You literally could do a hike every day. And it'll range from easy to hard, but once you start getting into the mountains, the elevation, and um, the off-gridness of them, they'll start, they'll start getting pretty hard. So just make sure you take your trekking poles and, and I keep emphasizing uh, footwear. So make sure you take some, some good hiking shoes or hiking boots. During the spring and summer, you really need to look out for rattlesnakes and copperheads up here. And those, so they say that if you smell cucumber, stop dead in your tracks because that's the scent that a copperhead puts out as a warning to let you know it's real close by you're fixing to get bit. Copperheads blend in really good with the ground and they have a distinct pattern and they call it the Hershey kiss. So if they have Hershey kisses on their on the body then you know it's a copperhead. Kiki, when I first moved up here about five or well, about seven years ago, she actually got bit by a copperhead and uh, at, her, at her cabin and when I got home, she always meets me outside. We have a pet door. She come and go, comes and goes as she wants to. I knew something was wrong. As soon as she came out, her throat was really swollen, almost the size of a grapefruit. And she's just a cockapoo, 20 pound dog. And I said, man, I, she must have been a bee or, or a hornet or something is what, what I was thinking. But something told me that something was wrong and I needed to take her to the vet. So I called the vet, the local vet, and they said, yeah, bring her in. And sure enough, she got hit three times by a copperhead in the lip because she thought it was a toy. Or, you know, she would always chase, she likes chasing the deer and the squirrels and everything. And uh, so I'm only assuming that she didn't know what it was, thought, hey, this is something I can play with. It was just luckily that I got her there and they gave her the antivenom. They actually give them what they call the rattlesnake antivenom. She made a full recovery. It was lucky, I mean, just because I didn't waste no time getting there. Every six months, because we're in the woods so much hiking and she loves to go hiking with us. She gets the uh, antivenom uh, shot and that basically supposedly gives them more time to get to the vet before, you know, they die uh, to get to get treated. So it doesn't keep them. It doesn't give them like superpowers where they don't get sick from getting a snake bit anymore, but it gives them more time to get to a vet to, to get treated. So just watch your surroundings. Oh, emergency alert's going off. So this guy's been, been being looked for for like a week. He was hiking the Appalachian Trail. The last time I seen him was off of Gooch Gap, and that's up in the mountains. And it can be pretty treacherous up there, especially in wet weather. If you slip and fall, you well, they won't find you again. I'm, I'm not trying to be nasty or anything, but they won't find you again until you know, next spring. Uh, or summer when hikers are back out. So that's the second one of those I've heard for this guy that they've been looking for. It's kind of sad, um, but you know, if you're gonna go out in the woods and I, and I here I'm gonna preach something that I don't do because before I met Donna, I used to do a lot of solo hiking. But if you have, but I took, I was smart about it. Like I would call my son and say, hey, look, I'm at this location. At the next stop sign, turn right. 
I'm at this location and I'm going to be gone for a three hour hike and I'm gonna call you. If you don't hear me back by a certain time, then you know something's gone wrong. Kind of use safety and, and smartness about what you're gonna do. Especially if you like to go in the woods because you just never know. You can just fall and turn right onto US 76. You can just fall and twist your ankle and you know you're so far back. If you're two miles out in the woods and you twist your, your ankle, two miles is gonna smell uh, feel like ten miles getting back because you're just gonna it's gonna be hard getting back. Um, so just let people know where you're at. And the Apple phones now they have the satellite. Isn't it the satellite thing, babe? Uh, it's six and a half miles, arrive at Clayton. So if you lose reception, because there's a lot of places up here you don't have reception, but they do have like the, the, the 911 satellite thing on the on the phones and the watches now. And that's one of the reasons why we went from Android to Apple for that function. So we're still traveling to uh, Clayton. And Clayton's a really cool little old town. It's right on the border, North Carolina and Georgia. If you go to the east a little bit, you'll hit the South Carolina border and then go into North Carolina. But you can actually bypass South Carolina going in there. And there's actually a couple of cool little places, waterfalls up in there that I don't think we're gonna hit today just because of the weather. Um, it wasn't supposed to rain today, but it's that's all it's done is rain. But this is a very, very beautiful area. Um, we're very, very blessed to uh, to have a cabin up here and uh, our beach house in, in Florida. It's a different lifestyle. Like when you go to the Keys, everybody says, oh, the Keys is a different lifestyle. You come up here to the mountains and everything is mountain time, man. Everything is laid back. If you need work done at your house or something, you know, I like to say is be patient because you're going to have a hard time finding somebody that wants to do anything up here. But look at all the turkey. You missed all. There's a whole field of turkey out there to the right. There's probably 20 of them out there. By our cabin, I say there's a good uh, two herds of deer. That deer are so thick up there where we live. You literally, and I have, can uh, shoot a deer off your back porch where I'm at. You so it's not... It's not real challenging, to be honest with you. You can sit there on your back porch, on the back porch at the cabin, drink a Bud Light, and sunrise, sunset, you know, is when they're active, and just pick the one you want. <laughs> All right, we're coming in on the Clayton now. We're coming in on the west side of Clayton. And uh, it's a cute little town. It has more services here, I guess, to say. They have more restaurants, gas stations. There's a Walmart and I believe it's a Home Depot. Up in this area, there's a lot of um, honeybee keepers. You'll, you'll see what they call the honor system for, uh, well, they'll have like honey uh, for sale on the side of the road, and you basically pull up and you can buy whatever honey you want. They'll have a, like a list of what the honey is, and you put the honey in, or the money in the jar and you, you take what you bought. This is like the access point. This is the last city going into North Carolina, last big city going into North Carolina. Uh, or yeah, from Georgia to North Carolina. So the gas is a little bit cheaper on this side of the border, but it's a, it's a small little uh, mountain town. You'll kind of see it up here. We're gonna be like in the little valley up above the headlight or the stoplight. You can't really tell because of the fog that's in here right now, but the mountains are right ahead of us. And it's a, just like I said, a, a, a quaint little mountain town where they still have a lot of mom and pop uh, stores. But they also have a Dollar Tree. And they also have the Dollar Generals up here too, or Dollar Store. Is it Dollar Store? Dollar Tree. Well, I know, but what are the other ones? Dollar General. Dollar General, yeah. They're like on every corner. Some of these buildings up here, like on the right, are very, very old. Probably early 1900s. Not, I guess not very, very old, but at least 100 years old. And this is a lot of tourists, but I don't know if you're going to see a lot of tourists today just because of the weather and the season. But look at the mountains ahead of us. If the fog wasn't there, you could see some of the colors on the trees still. It's a very pretty area. 
And this is 441 or 220 or 23, which is the main um, uh, road that comes through basically northeast Georgia. And like I said, you got a little bit more of the uh, gas stations and restaurants. A lot of these towns uh, up here, they might have one or two gas stations and they're not, they're mom and pop places. So in uh, restaurants, you just really the best thing to do is just kind of ask the locals where they eat and there'll be something like a buffet or something like that uh, up in here. But we're going north towards North Carolina right now. I don't plan on going all the way to North Carolina, but I'm going to take Donna to a place that's kind of like a tourist uh, destination if the weather will cooperate with us where you can get out and walk around the little shops and stuff. It's pretty, pretty neat. But this is a very beautiful ride. If you can, you can tell up here, we're coming up into the mountains. Dahula Gorge is south of us, and uh, that is a really cool place to go check out. Uh, when we and Donna were dating, I actually took her there. We went hiking for the day there. Uh, but Tula Gorge is beautiful. If you ever come up here, put that on, put on your list, man. That is 100% to do. Where's the hike with all the steps? Em Emma Kalola Falls. Okay. 686 or something like that steps up. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's quite, it's, yeah, and it's all going up. It's all elevation, man to go there and do a video. Nah, I'm good. No? Yeah, we could do it. Don't want I wouldn't want to, want to see us panting. Yeah, I tell you, I wouldn't want to, that's like when we went to Creed, and went 10,000 feet up or whatever that was, we did that hike. Oh my God, bring oxygen, take oxygen with you. Yeah, I think it was about 13,500 feet. It was crazy like tall. Top of that hike. Man. We didn't hike all the way up. Now we were camping at like maybe nine or ten thousand feet elevation, so we can't we hiked about three thousand feet, I think. We are taking oxygen with us this time. Yeah, that was if you're gonna do any kind of altitude, definitely how get those disposable or I don't I think they're disposable, right? They're not refillable. Yeah, they're disposable. Uh, oxygen things, just you know, I would, and we are going to do that when we. Uh, Go on our big trip here in February. So you guys, we're gonna—I don't—we keep telling everybody we're gonna be at Quartzsite uh, Truck Rally in February, and then we're gonna hang out in the Midwest for a couple months, and then we're gonna try to cross the border into Canada in May, and then Alaska. So this is Black, Black Rock Mountain. Okay, that's what this Black Rock Mountain State Park. It's on top of the mountain up here on the left. It's a really nice state park. You can't see it. I don't—I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but the mountains. Yeah, the mountains are right there on the right. Uh, you're, we're like in a little valley right here. It's very foggy. Very, very foggy. Everywhere you look, or everywhere on these small, small uh, towns, you'll find more gun shops than you will gas stations, just kind of FYI. But there's a gun shop on like, like every corner, man. Uh, we saw a gun shop and a pharmacy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was up in, uh, where was that at? That was a Blairsville, Blairsville, Georgia. It was a pharmacy that had a gun shop in there. But this is a beautiful mountain drive, and there's ample boondocking opportunities up here for you, or if you, if you need campgrounds, lots of campgrounds. The only thing that you're going to have a problem with is cell phone reception that goes in and out. Once you hit a city, you got it. When you get out of the city, you don't have it. If you have Starlink, you're golden, as long as you're underneath the trees. So Danny's taking me shopping. Well, there's a lot of construction going on right now. Off season, they do everything here when it's off season. But uh, when it's in season, this place is like a little freaking tourist trap. <laughs> but we're in Dillard, Dillard, Georgia. And if you've ever heard of the Dillard House, go check it out, because they have really good food and it's uh, family style. They bring it out to you uh, in bowls and stuff. It's pretty cool. We might go there for lunch, but uh, we're gonna go check it out and see what's in here. Wanted to bring Donna by here and take a look at it, see what she thought. Are you gonna stand in there in the rain? Come on, crazy. Howdy. 
Why not E? If what? You weren't making a bow? <laughs> Why are you making it then? Because the customer wants it. Oh, customer's always right. No, the customer's always the customer. <laughs> customer's always the customer. I've never heard of them. At home, it's a roller tree figurine. Never heard of it. They're really cool. They don't have I no have faces. A, a mom holding a baby. You notice that? There's no faces. Oh, look. Even the camels, and the, the, no, no, nothing has faces. There's a nativity. Look at this. Oh, that's cool. Does it stop or something to go backwards? Probably. That one's hitting the mountain. Oh, it goes backwards, yeah. Boy, somebody put some effort into cutting that foam. Sparkly too. Those are de Department 56 retire pieces. What does that mean? They don't make them no more? Yep. Peanuts. Oh, yeah. And Disney. <laughs> Snoopy. And if you like the Disney ones. Called it the pink section. Yeah. <laughs> this is the gator section. Georgia section. I can't believe they got Georgia or uh, Florida gator stuff up here. Why? Because this is definitely bulldog <laughs> area. Go dogs! They got Alabama. Roll Tide. They even got to Auburn. Boo. Four eagles. We root for Georgia Bulldogs and Alabama Roll Tide. I was a Navy recruiter in the late 80s, early 90s in Fairhope, Alabama. I was telling a story. What you want? The Christmas story lamp. What does that mean? Have you not watched the Christmas story? Uh, I don't know, maybe. Really? Why is it, what's the deal with the lamp? I don't know. Well, that's the lamp that the father got for Christmas that he loved. And they've even got a little mini one. Uh, it's stupid, but it's... <laughs> I guess I didn't see that one. Okay, we'll have to see that this year. Hey, got you some bell, some uh, bear bells. Oh, that don't work. That's yeah. a belt. <laughs> that's that's how, funny. How would I go through your belt hey, loops? Hey, I need a belt. Yeah. I, should get that one. I don't think it would go through your belt loops. Anyways, I was telling a story, but now okay, I'm not going to tell it. Nope, not doing it. No, they want to hear your story. Nope, can't, can't make me. So Donna wants to put a tree up this year, so we're putting up a tree, I reckon. You reckon? I reckon. Should we put some wine bottles on the tree? Well, we'll have plenty of them around it. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going like that all the time? It's got a motor. Huh. Not necessarily like birds in it. Okay, so I guess Christmas shop is over. We've got some honey. I ain't never seen the raspberry honey. So this one's blueberry honey, peach honey, and raspberry. You'd I like bet to taste it. I, I bet the blueberry it. one's good. I bet. I wonder if people understand what that means. So what, the, what they do, the beehive put the, if they want raspberry, they, they put the beehives next to the raspberry so they get the pollen off the raspberries. When they, and the same thing with the blueberries, the same thing with the peaches. So the farmers will actually pay the beehive guys to put their beehives out in their fields to help pollinate their crops. Now this, we got one like this. Yes, we do. These are cool because they, they crackle like a fire, fireplace. It's, re it's really neat. My sister got me one for Christmas one year, and I still got it. She burns it all the time, but it sounds it goes pop, 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 pop. I was I was showing it what it does. It goes pop, 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 pop. They're pretty neat, neat candles. If you see, if you see one, 
you should you should get one. That's pretty cool. I told everybody that you are an avid country line dancer. <laughs> I enjoy it. I'm not very good at it. Oh, whatever. I like seeing you shake your booty butt. Uh -huh. Here, so I should be holding it now, but you. Why? She don't never like me. She always makes me on camera. She's always looking for the clearance section. <laughs> Don is an avid puzzle person. I don't have the patience for that. Oh, those are cool. Look at that. It's like a T-Rex head. Oh, yeah. A bear. What is it made out of? Like plastic? It feels like stone. Horse head. It says they're sculpted in England. Huh. Yeah, I guess it is rock. Huh, pretty neat. Yeah. He finished his bow. <laughs> yeah. Like an antique store or something right there. Oh Lord, we're gonna be here forever. Yeah. I always say that we're in here buying dead people stuff. Donna loves to go to those, um, what do you call those things that we went to? Flea market? No, where people had the, are you buying dead people stuff? Estate sales. Estate sales. She loves estate sales. I got some good deals. I said she's going to buy dead people stuff all the time. So Donna said this name of the place was called Upstairs and Downstairs. That's a big old door. Smells like dead people stuff. Is that what it is? It smells like dead people stuff. I think I got a Trump picture in the corner up there. <laughs> That's a table. It's glass in there. Yeah. That's cool. I if it floats. I want to start dancing. Stop it. I only do that in private, baby. <laughs> you better bring some $5 bills, too. $5 bills? It, well, inflation. <laughs> it used to be dollar bills, now it's $5 bills. So, popping these new shoes. It's a shame because I just don't think people buy this kind of stuff anymore. You know, the plates know. and stuff? No. I mean, no. When my, yeah, when my mom died, she had all her grandmother's stuff, and nobody wanted it. <laughs>